semen as evidence. So what about locating semen to start with? Well, first of all, it's often difficult to see under room and ambient light conditions. So often what we do is we just collect things that could have traces of semen on them and submit them to the lab for processing. You would wanna be collecting victim's clothing, especially underwear, suspect's clothing, bedding, towels, tissue papers, where are these located in relation to whatever the crime was, car seats, anything that you believe that could have signs of semen, you would collect those things and send them to the lab. Now, as far as being able to visualize them, again, uh, they're hard to see in normal lighting. They may appear as slightly yellow stain on light colored fabrics, or maybe even a whitish stain on a dark colored fabric. Sometimes they appear a little crusty, but often they're gonna be overlooked. So you collect those things and ask that they be tested. Now there is a way that you can look for signs of semen at the crime scene other than just collecting the items. So you can use special lighting, a forensic light source or an alternate light source. If you use this in the right configuration, the stains will fluoresce. You have to look through a certain filter. I'll demonstrate this in just one moment. Another way you can do this is through long wave ultraviolet, but ultraviolet lights are dangerous. And so we've pretty much phased those out, but that's a way you could also find traces of semen is with long wave ultraviolet. This is an example of an alternate light source. So it just looks like a big flashlight. This one works on lithium batteries and it has three positions. The first position is just white light. The second position is a blue light. And the third position is also a blue light, but it's brighter. This light is giving us 465 nanometers as its wavelength. And that's the blue region. And this will work well when use the appropriate filter on semen. It will also work with blood stain, but it doesn't make the blood stain fluoresce. It makes it darker. So if you have blood stain on a dark surface, it's not going to be any help at all. <laughs> but if you have a surface that's somewhat light and you use it on blood stain, you'll see it turns the blood stain darker, which may help you to photograph it in some situations. And this also will work with urine and saliva and then also with fluorescent fingerprint powders. Now, when you're using this, you do have to have a barrier filter. So what happens is you have the blue light hitting objects and reflecting off. Now, all that you and I see, all that photography records is reflected light. So the light reflecting off of this is blue. So if I were to take a picture, Right now, I would get just blue. But if I filter it through these orange filters, the orange filter is actually gonna block out the blue. And then I'll see almost no blue at all. And instead I'll see what the blue light is doing, which is causing some luminescence or fluorescence. So that's the whole idea. The blue light causes something to happen, some excitement to happen. And then the orange filter, sometimes an amber filter, will then block out the blue light and we'll see what the blue light is making happen. So to do that, I'm gonna start with some evidence here. So here is an item of evidence. I'm gonna put on my gloves. And in the evidence is a is some paper and folded up in the paper, I have some women's underwear. All right. So just with the normal light that we have, the visible light, if we look carefully, we see nothing. 
I don't see anything at all. Well, maybe something a little bit right there, a little bit of a crusty thing right there. But otherwise, I can't see anything that would indicate that there is any body fluid, uh, especially something like semen there. So what I'm going to do now is take this orange filter and put it in front of the lens. And I need to darken the room. The first position is a white light. So this is not going to help us any, even with the orange filter. But now if I put it on one of the blue lights, we can see stains here, including that little crusty part. That's that really bright spot on. We see more in other areas as well. So this is what we would use to look at evidence at a crime scene. They'll also often use this in the crime lab. So right now you're not really seeing any of the blue light. If I take the filter out, then that's all you see is blue but with the filter there. So at the crime scene, I am going to wear the goggles. And then if I need to take photographs at the crime scene, I'll just repeat for the camera what I had to do to be able to see this with my naked eye. So I had to use the alternate light source and I had to use orange goggles. Well, then that's what I just do for my camera. I go ahead and use the blue light for my light source. And I use the large orange filter in front of my lens. Something to be aware of is that semen and urine and saliva are not the only things that can show up with the alternate light source. As you can see in this slide, there is yogurt, milk, lotion, and some kind of glue. Those things are also fluorescing, similarly to uh, urine, semen. Saliva is always very faint. I've never seen it very dark. So what does this tell us? It's a presumptive test. It is likely a body fluid, but not necessarily for sure. So we just, we suspect it is. We just, in our report, we say that under the alternate light source, this was fluorescent. And then we let the lab decide what it actually is later. Some students, they've got their camera set up. This one is holding the orange filter and holding the alternate light source. And the other one's taking the picture through that orange filter. Same thing here. Here's the orange filter and the alternate light source. Now, if we have something that appears to be semen, what are we gonna do? We're gonna document it. We're gonna add it to our notes. We're gonna take photographs. We're gonna add it to our sketch. We're gonna prepare our packaging. As far as the order of preference for collecting dry stains, if you have a dry stain, no matter what it is, the very best thing to do is to collect the entire object that has the stain. And as you do that, ensure that the stain will not flake off and become dislodged. You could cut the stain from carpet, upholstery, or other items that cannot be collected. So that's, you can't take the whole item, you take a portion of the item. If you can't do either one of those, the last possibility, and it's, it'll work, but it's not the best, is to moisten a sterile swab with still water, swab the suspected semen stain, let it air dry and package it. But you're not gonna get as much of the sample. It will be a little more challenging for the lab. So if you can, if it's like underwear, you can take the underwear. If it's a sheet, you can take all or part of the sheet. If it's the seat of a car, maybe you'll consider cutting out a section of the seat of the car. Especially if you're using an ultra light source in it and it's shining, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna get that evidence. And then if you are doing a swab to collect semen or other body fluids, you want to do a control sample as well. Saliva, document, prepare your packaging. Now, where can we find saliva? Cigarette butts, used beverage cans or bottles, those kinds of things. Also, when we're talking about saliva, we're talking about DNA, right? So that's what we're looking for. 
So in sexual assault cases, consider swabbing the breast or other body areas to collect potential saliva evidence if the circumstances of the crime dictate. Let's now talk about reference material. This is a little different than the control sample. This reference material is who does this belong to? So we might want to exclude victims or we might want to get a sample from a suspect to see if this is their DNA we got at the crime scene. So the most common way to do this is with a buckle swab. A buckle swab is where you swab the inside of the cheek in the mouth of the person you want to sample. And that will give you plenty of material for a DNA analysis. Another way is to draw blood. And it can be just a few drops. And if you do get a reference sample, you treat that as evidence. 